Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm standing in our chicken coop area right now. This is a flower bed we put in last spring and we did fill it up quite a bit, but there are some areas that toward the end of like our big push of planting, I just popped annuals in this spot last year. So I'm gonna work on filling it up with more perennials. We're gonna start with this one right here. This is called Decadence Dark Chocolate Baptisia. So I really wanna show you this plant and talk about it. And then we'll give you a tour of this whole area. And there's other Baptisias, a different variety on the back side of the coop that I'll show you that's just starting to bloom. So Decadence Dark Chocolate, beautiful chocolate colored blooms that kind of have a yellow interior or like a chartreuse yellow. Isn't that the most gorgeous color? They make for a really good cut flower, which is one of the big reasons I want to plant it. Uh, and you can see how many blooms are on this plant. So it blooms late spring through early summer. This one is almost in full bloom. It's got quite a, quite a number yet to open. This is kind of the stage where I would maybe cut it to use it in a cu cut arrangement, but there's a ton of buds already are still forming. So it comes up fresh from the ground every year. You can see where I cut it back last fall when we were getting ready to store it. And then it comes back like this. There's a fresh stock there and all of this is brand new. And I love the way the leaves look. I think it's a really, like it's a delicate looking perennial while it's not delicate at all. Like it can take like average to poor soil. So if you have some tough areas and full sun, this plant likes that kind of conditions. In fact, it's rather drought tolerant once it's established. Resistant to deer, it attracts pollinators and it grows, oh, I grew a weed in there too. Look at that. Awesome, it grows about three by three. So I'm assuming, or I'm thinking it'll fill up this area right here. I do have a Zephyrin Druin rose, which will, will be cleaned up here very soon. It is a climbing rose that I intend to have grow up our coop, but it has had no attention. So it's growing all over the ground right now. In fact, that's where most of its blooms are, but I'll get to that later. So what I wanna do is get this one in the ground and then we'll see kind of how it looks. I do think we will need to add in some more like different colored foliage in this area, maybe some hookahs um, that have some red in there. Woo! I'm sitting on that butterfly bush. I need to be careful. So I do have a buddleia in here that's uh, the Miss Violet, I think. Yes, blooms purple. So it's kind of perfect. I'll have this for my late spring, early summer blooms. This will start blooming like midsummer ish and then bloom through the rest of the season. So, hey, Russell. Let's see where the drip tubes are. I do have a drip system running through this area. There, look at right there. There's always a drip tube running through the area I wanna plant, which is good and kind of a pain at the same time. So I'll have to be careful not to cut a hole in that. So I'm gonna ease this out of its can. Oh, that looks pretty good. Root system right there. And you know, I've talked about teasing root systems before. This one right here, I'm just gonna loosen these bigger roots up just a tiny bit. But it's far less necessary than I once thought it was. You know, I've talked to a lot of growers in the industry um, and they say that you can actually do a little bit more harm than good sometimes uh, when you're doing some root teasing like this. So I'm just gonna do a real light one around the edges here. I think that that will be sufficient. I like how you always talk about not teasing the roots while you're teasing the roots. Well, I said that it's, <laughs> I said that it's not as necessary. This one is a little bit bound though. Called hey, out. Hey, no. See now this one is a little bit tight down there. So I just loosened it a little bit, Erin. A little bit. I didn't rough the whole thing up. All right. Got to grab my shovel. Thank you. He's my root teasing police. Joys of working with your husband. Okay. Now I'm gonna dig a hole, Aaron. I'll film it. Okay. Oh, see, look, oh, worms. Sign of healthy soil. Yeah, this is like chock full of worms. They're everywhere. Also, I wanna address the fact that I have a coat on. It's almost the end of May. We had a cold front come through and I'm probably just being a wuss right now, but I was getting a little bit acclimated to the warmer temperatures. So I came outside this morning felt really chilly to me. So anyway, while well, I'm wearing a coat, see if I kind of clear it out underneath the drip tube, I can kind of tuck it underneath there. All right, Biotone. A little bit of starter fertilizer. Let the cloud clear. Now one could use a kneeling pad or 
that works. Okay. Oh, that's kind of perfect. This area kind of slopes, so I always err on the side of putting my root ball a tiny bit above soil level, especially for things that don't want a ton of water, and that way the water will kind of, I don't know, it seems to work out better for me. I'm gonna backfill around the root ball, make sure that that soil is tucked in really tight and there's no air pockets around the roots. I always air on root balls a little higher too because we mulch a lot and we like to put a thick layer of mulch. So uh, anyway, it works really, really well in our space. I'll probably go get a little bit of extra mulch after a while and just kind of touch this area up a little bit, but oh my word, I really like that. You clear my area here and then we'll do a tour. I think it looks so great in that spot. And then knowing that I'm gonna keep, this as a, um, uh, inkberry holly right here, a strong gem box. Gem box? I can't remember. Anyway, oh, hey, it has a tag. Strong box, um, inkberry holly. And I wanna keep this one, it's an evergreen. I wanna keep it fairly small, like right around this size. So I think it's gonna fill in perfectly. I've got some uh, firefly sunshine, firefly sunshine, achillea, yarrow right here. And it's kind of dotted throughout this bed. Um, so I think that will be a great color. Uh, and then I left enough space for the Budlia to grow as well. So I think it's going to be really great. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it is a zone four through nine. So it's very winter hardy and um, also attracts bees and butterflies and is resistant to deer. Um, so there are really a lot of good things about this plant. And I have the pink lemonade variety planted behind the coop. And that's what we'll show you here in a minute. But I thought we would just kind of tour through this area, show you what the plants are looking like. We still have quite a number of areas to kind of fill in, which will be a fun thing to do. But kind of starting right in front here, you can see the other Zephyrin Jerome Rose right here. I mean, it's gorgeous. This one's kind of making its way up a little bit, but these, I'm gonna prune, you know, a lot of these off, um, and then I'll probably train a couple of them up onto the coop. But all of the stuff that's growing out will be pruned off because I don't want that. I don't want it to fill into the bed. I want it to be trained up and be pretty clean around the base. So we need to do a tremendous amount of pruning on this one. We've got another Miss Violet Budlia right here. So it fills in about like five by five dark purple blooms. And those are front planted by these peachy cream, oh so easy peachy cream roses, which is a perfect color. I absolutely love these and they don't get very big. So I have a little swoop of these. Last year I put like purple fountain grass in here and a lot of annuals. We have Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. We planted this spring and it has been cut back. So it was blooming when we planted it. It was forced to bloom a little bit early because it was in a greenhouse. And so we've sheared it back already. Right here we've got uh, Indiglo Girl Salvia. It's looking perfect. Planted that last year. And then a Weeping Colorado Blue Spruce, which I need to stake. See, it's got a little stake right here, but it grew quite a bit. And I need to stake the leader because I want it to be, you know, about like so tall. And then I'll let it do its weeping thing after that point. But a lot of empty space up here where we had tulips, a window basket I need desperately to clean out. I mean, the pansy, pansies still have some good color, but they are swallowing up my three boxwoods that are in here. So we'll get that handled here probably pretty quick, but everything, like even the tulip foliage, usually by this time it's all died back because it's been warm enough, but it's been so cool that everything still, it's like holding for a really long time, which makes me feel like I'm gonna get a little behind on my container planting because like, how can you pull out pansies that look this amazing? It's really hard to do. Um, so let's go this way. Got another container. This is a um, Serbian spruce lollipop. I get asked that every time we show it. Um, and I think I picked these up at Home Depot one year. I needed something that was tall enough, like the right scale for this area. And they've done really well. Does it really even matter what I put around them? And they're on drip system. They get watered every day with the plants around them and they, they thrive. Uh, this is an avalanche birch right here, which we planted this last spring. And I'm really hoping because this one gets like 50 feet tall, I think 35 or so, maybe 40 foot spread. So a really sizable tree, which means in the end, this area will become a shade garden, which I can't wait for. But I really wanted to put a tree here that will eventually shade part of the chicken run over there. And then this is our cottage garden. I have lady gardener roses right here and they are just budded up. You can see they're like the faintest of apricot kind of blushy pink. 
kind of a creamy, they're beautiful and they're just full of buds. I did have to treat these for chlorosis because they have a little bit of that right, right here. See the dark green veining? It's an iron deficiency. Dark green veining and the kind of yellow foliage. So they've had iron tone. This one's improved dramatically. Uh, but I've got catch pajama nepeta. This is the stuff I planted last year. So this is like blooming at the true time here, as opposed to the cat's pajamas we planted this spring that had been forced to bloom early. So I, I think this is the perfect, perfect plant. And I think it might look beautiful to kind of mirror it right here and kind of have that purple spilling over the pathway. And then once it's done blooming, you shear it back about halfway and then it'll bloom again. So it seems like it's in bloom for a lot of the season. I've got serendipity alliums right here, which will start blooming like early to midsummer, And they're like the little round purple allium blooms and they're, they're gorgeous. I also have some pink yarrow back in here and then the brother Stefan clematis, look at this. Need to do a little training on this one. I've got it tied. <laughs> it's tied up to the fence, but that's about it. I really should put a little trellis of some kind, but it's full of buds and very happy. There's our pixie miniature peach right here. Um, and I did not spray it at all and I'm dealing with some issues. So we may be doing some videos on what's going on here. Uh, but it did great last year. I created, produced a ton of peaches and they were really tasty. And then we've got spearmint hookahs here, uh, wisteria. And then we do have a hedge of carex right here, which I think I'm gonna cut back um, because there are some it's like an evergreen grass, um, but in our area where it's a little bit cooler usually, it does brown out a little bit, so you can cut it back in the spring and have it reflush. Winecraft black uh, smokebush in here, so it's a smokebush that stays on the smaller side, which is great. And then I've got a, so this is, it's a weeping cherry. What variety of weeping cherry? Is it just a snow fountains? I can't remember. Anyway, bloomed beautifully. I think I have a picture of it. It was full of honeybees. And I wanna kinda of keep it trimmed up. So you can see I need to trim these two branches so that it stays in a nicer kind of small umbrella. And I've got salvia underneath it and some hookahs. There's a euphorbia here, which I can't remember the name of. I planted it in a video. It was either last year or the year before, I can't remember. And then if you move this way, oh, I gotta mention the Brunnera, I almost forgot. Brunnera is just beautiful right now and it's been in its prime for the last several weeks and we have it all over the place. And then this is the Japanese maple, it's a blood good that I had behind our chicken coop and I had to dig it up and move it over here this spring uh, because it was gonna get way too much sun where it was at. And our sun fries Japanese maples. Uh, lambs ear in here and this area really does fill in like all of these spaces in here fill in There are some cherry truffles, I think hookahs and then five Baptisias in here. So this is the pink lemonade. They're just starting to form buds right now, but this one's a little further along It's got a couple of blooms stalks opening, but they're like this dark kind of raspberry color with that pale yellow Aren't they so pretty? Like this, I just love it. So I've got five here, actually six. One of them's a little bit smaller. I think that one got broken off um, when I was working in here a little bit. So it'll probably flush back, back some new branches, but um, five, six of them in here will fill in. I've got a, a witch hazel in the back there. Let me pick my way through here so I can point these out. This is an Arnold's Promise witch hazel, which blooms yellow in the winter time. Um, and I think it's gonna be really happy right here. So far it's done really well. And then I've got three hibiscus. I think these are the, what kind are they, Erin? Are they the evening rose or? Anyway, I'll put a picture or the name up on the screen so you can see them. I'm always really happy to see growth on hibiscus because as you know, they're one of the last ones to show growth uh, and they come back fresh from the ground every single year. The reason why I leave stubs like this is one, if you leave them about six inches or so, it does protect the crown of the plant because if any water goes into those branches and freezes, it's up a little higher instead of right by the crown. And then also it allows you to see where the plant is. So you don't accidentally step on stuff. And then it gets just totally gobbled up by all the foliage and the blooms and things. Um, but I really enjoyed these blooms back here last year. Another zephyrine, look at how gorgeous. This is like the best stage of bloom right here. They are so beautiful and like these are really long i should be able to 
I think do some good training with these. And then recently just planted the delphiniums, a big drift of them. There's some on either side of the fountain and the foxgloves that I started from seed inside. And then this bed will be interesting. I've got White Wands Veronica that's been here the last few years, as well as the, uh, is this the Wild Rose Hookera? And traditionally, or before this year, they've had quite a, a bit of shade because of the elm tree that was here. And so we'll see how they do, because they're gonna be in the hot sun for a good part of the day now. Um, so it might be, it might mean that I need to relocate them. And the last thing I wanted to show you kind of in this area was this hardy geranium, I just planted these this spring. It's called Boom Chocolata, is the name of the plant. And I love the dark leaves. Looks really good to pop something like that in so it breaks up the sea of green. And then really beautiful purple flowers that are super long lasting. Usually I'll have one bloom with my geraniums that lasts a long time, then I shear back the bloom stalks and then it pushes more for the rest of the season. So super great perennial. So anyway, I think I could go on and on, but it's still very early in the season. So there's not a lot in terms of blooms quite yet, but soon this area will explode, especially once we start getting some consistent heat uh, in our area, area, which I'm not complaining about. I've just been loving the little bit of rain we've been getting and a little bit cooler temperatures. I think it'll make me, uh, I don't know, tolerate the long stretch of heat. We usually get a little bit better this year. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of seeing how this area is shaping up and seeing that beautiful new Baptisia we put in the ground and we'll show you what it looks like later on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.